we know that electromagnetic waves are really fluctuating electric and magnetic fields. Now, it turns out that when you're thinking about polarization, it helps to just focus on the electric fields. Um, and we can kind of leave the magnetic fields as an afterthought. If we just focus on the electric field, the magnetic fields will take care of themselves. So, so let's say here's a uh, electric field. Uh, this electric field here is, say, oscillating up and down. Um, so which way uh, um, is uh, the light propagating? Which way could the light be propagating here? Now, careful. If the electric field is oscillating in uh, the up and down direction, remember that the direction of propagation of the wave is always perpendicular to the oscillation of the field. So it'd be in and out of the board. That's right. Or, based on the way I've drawn it so far, it could also be left and right. Um, but for example, if E is up and down and V is left and right, then the direction of propagation of the wave has to be into the board and out of the board. All three of them are perpendicular to each other. We also see that from the Poitin vector. Remember, the Poitin vector tells us the direction of propagation of the wave. Well, it's E cross B, so it's going to be perpendicular to both of those. Okay. So let's suppose here that the direction of propagation is into the page or out of the page. Now, it's possible that this is, uh, so the, the wave here is propagating into or out of the page. Our wave here is it's not propagating, it's propagating into or out of the page, say. Now, it's possible that as part of this same wave, there could be other electric fields that are oscillating left and right. Could those really be part of the same wave? Could that wave still be propagating into and out of the page? Well, yes, because that would still be perpendicular to this. So this could still be part of that same wave that's propagating into and out of the page, because left and right is also perpendicular to my chalk holder here. But if you think about it then, we could also have electric fields that are oscillating northeast and southwest, so to speak, because that would still be perpendicular to the direction of propagation. You can also have oscillations like this. Well, this is all I'm going to draw, but actually there's many other oscillations. I can have the electric field oscillating in any direction that I'm turning my chalk right now. Um, so it doesn't have to be just these uh, eight directions or whatever. Anything that's in the plane of the page, any oscillation back and forth in the plane of the page would allow the wave to propagate into or out of the page. So normal light consists of all of these different types of oscillations. Normal light consists of all these different types of oscillations. This is called unpolarized light. Normal unpolarized light would look like this. Okay. Um, however, it's also possible to polarize light. So, what would polarized light look like? Well, it would only be oscillating in one direction. So here's some light that's been polarized in the up-down direction. And here's a different light wave that's been polarized in the right-left direction. And you can also polarize it in any of these slanting directions. You can polarize it in whatever direction that you want. All right, so polarized light consists of oscillations in uh, only one dimension, whereas unpolarized light consists of oscillations um, along every possible uh, direction that's perpendicular to the propagation of the wave. Okay, so that's the basic difference between a picture of unpolarized and polarized light. Um, and again, we're ignoring what's happening to the magnetic fields. It's not really too important to focus on that for polarization. We can just so when people say that a Electri when people say that a field is polarized up and down, they mean the electric field is polarized up and down. That's the convention. So by the way, though, it would be a good question, which way is the magnetic field here polarized? Because it has to be perpendicular to this, if the wave is still propagating into and out of the page. Okay, so here would be this. Now, how do we get this polarization? Well, we pass the light through a polarizer. 
and a polarizer is simply a device that only allows one type of oscillation through. So, for, so we can draw a picture of what type of oscillation the polarizer lets through. For example, maybe this polarizer only lets up and down oscillations through. Well, then after the light passes through the polarizer, it would look like this. If this was the original light over here that was unpolarized, the new light would look like this. Okay. Um, so this would be the before picture, and this would be the after picture. Of course, we could have used a horizontal polarizer, and then they, uh, we would get electric fields oscillating horizontally. Or we could have used a northeast-southwest polarizer, and then we would get polarized light that's only uh, oscillating northeast and southwest. So is this light polarized or unpolarized? Polarized, because I've only shown one direction of oscillation. Polarized in what direction? Well, up and down. So what would happen to this light if we passed it through this polarizer? There would be no change, because all of it would get through. So the before and after pictures would be the same. So here, we would start with this, and we'd get this at the end. On the other hand, What would we get here? Nothing, because this is not in the direction of the polarizer. What would we get here? Nothing. Now this is a little bit tricky. Some people would say nothing because it's not in the direction of the polarizer, but in physics, we have to think in terms of components. The polarizer lets through the component of the oscillation that's in the direction of the polarizer. Polarizer lets through the component of the oscillation that's in the direction of the polarizer. The polarizer lets through the component of the original uh, light that's in the direction of the polarizer. So did our original light have any up and down parts? Well, from the perspective of a physicist, it does because it has an up and down component. You can see this light has partially a left-right component and partially an up-down component. For example, on this side of the oscillation, here's the up component uh, and here's the horizontal component. Well, the horizontal component of oscillation is not going to get let through by the polarizer, but the vertical component will get let through. So when we think in terms of components, um, this light is going to get let through here. Um, however, only the up-down component is going to get let through, which means that the amplitude of the new electric field is going to be smaller than the amplitude of the previous one. So I try to draw these arrows as shorter than the overall arrows over here, because we're not letting through the overall oscillation, we're only letting in a component of the oscillation. Uh, so this light is going to have a lower electric field than before, but still some of it gets through. Um, why was it Why was it that none of this got through? Well, because this doesn't have any component that's in the direction of oscillation. So the only time that you get complete cancellation is when the electric field is oscillating completely perpendicular to the polarizer. In the other situation, there's at least a component that's in the same direction. Why did this light get through all the way? Because here, the overall vector is already entirely in the direction. So if you broke it into components, the only component would be in the same direction. So the bigger the component that's in the direction of the polarizer, the more light will get through. And the smaller the component that's in the direction of the polarizer, the less light would get through. So for example, let's say this is the original light. What would happen if we pass this original light through this vertical polarizer? <coughs> Just a little it will get through, because if you break it into components, you can see the up-down oscillation is very small compared to the overall vector. So there will still be some of it get the it's through, but we would symbolize it by very small arrows because the component that's in the direction of the polarizer is very small. So this is just one more example of the many cases throughout the course where it helps to think in terms of components. So is that why, because they're talking about like when you turn the polarizer, it gets dimmer and dimmer. It's because the components are getting smaller and smaller. 
Yeah, precisely. So there's a point when the polarizer is parallel to the electric field, and then the whole thing gets through. Uh, and there's a point where the polarizer is perpendicular to the original electric field, and then none of it gets through. But there's also a bunch of intermediate parts, uh, where as you're turning the polarizer, the component of the electric field that's in the direction of the polarizer keeps getting smaller and smaller. And therefore, the amount of electric field that gets through keeps getting dimmer and dimmer.